Uh, How y'all doing? How y'all doing? We're gonna go. We're, good. we're gonna go forward. We tried to do a video. We tried to do a live, but it didn't come out well because we couldn't hear her. So I decided to do a regular video of us together. You know, and I felt that she needed to share it. You see the pain on her face. You see the distressed look that's on yeah. her face. That's real. And the reason why I'm sharing it's always it, there. It's always there. And and one of the things I, I told her that she needs to do is she needs to alert people. She needs to inform younger people. She needs to inform older people. She needs to inform everybody that some of the things that she did in her youthful time, she drank to excess, she smoked to excess. No put lungs. And now, because she did those things, she now is forced to deal with a lot of stuff. So I'm gonna let her tell her story. It's because it's her story. It's not my story, it's All her right. story. Well, after 28 and a half years at the post office, it wore me down to where I would have to find it necessary just to get those people out of my head so I could get some sleep and wake up refreshed after a good night's hangover. I would wake up and do the zombie walk to the post office on a daily basis for 28 and a half years. And I smoked too much. And after a 40 year habit of smoking Newports, the lengthy ones, and I drank Jack Daniels to excess to put myself to sleep and I did a lot of damage to my body. I'm suffering the consequences of that damage after going to the, the base from where I received help from this veteran here. And actually, I had some things explained to me. Do you want to discuss the brain matter? We can go into that, but I, but I want to paint. I want to paint a picture so that me as a person looking at this video, I need to see in my mind. I need to understand in what manner did you drink? Oh. When did you start drinking? At what age, approximately? And in what manner did you drink? Like you told me that you didn't even use a glass. No, I just would unscrew the cap on a gallon bottle of Jack Daniels Green, cause it went down a lot smoother than the regular Jack Daniels. So I became a connoisseur of Jack Daniels. It would knock me right out. And I looked forward to that sleep. As long as I could just pass out, either while I was hungover or I would get some sleep. That was my coping mechanism. And as I drank, I smoked incessantly, a 40 year habit. I'm so proud of myself for giving up smoking. I never thought I could actually stop, but after three heart attacks and God knows what's going on internally, it's like I can see with these doctors that I now have the damage that was done because I had to be a hardhead and it didn't work out for me. I'm suffering the consequences of being having a hard head and making a soft behind out of my hard head. I refuse to listen to reason and I knew when I got saved, it was important for me to get those blessings in my life, but I didn't naturally get saved. I did it because I was on the prayer line every Friday night and I would listen to the word. And I know it's shocking to a lot of people that I'm of that ilk. I I got saved, and ever since then, I found love, and if somebody had slapped me and told me I was going to marry a stranger, 
it was it was it's been a beautiful thing as like as though I found my friend who we've been circling around for decades, literally decades, and we can talk and I have nothing to say bad about this man. Oh, he's everything to me. Everything that I would want in a man. And he's attentive. And he told me that I had to stop driving after I went to California. But I saw my sisters of 40 years. I met them the first time I was in the desert at Edwards Air Force Base. But those ladies have been my sisters. We all had on our t-shirts and they're, they're beautiful people. They're God-fearing people. They love James and they're glad that I found a mate for life and he asked me to marry him. I thought <laughs> he was out of his mind being wife number four. <laughs> But it works. I found my friend, and I've been blessed beyond measure. Everything has happened for me. Even from the mistakes that I made in my finances, and he discussed it with me with no judgment at all. And he's got me to thinking that I need to invest my stimulus money so it's been nothing but good things happening in my life. And I'm just so pleased with the Almighty, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I got to give him all the props that's due. It's just a miraculous thing that I found this man. And he's a God-fearing man. He can, he can score, quote, scripture. Even impressed Pastor Darby. He's a pastor. He married us. So I'm pleased with the man of my choice. So it was not a mistake. It's a beautiful thing. And for you to find your life mate as old as we are, <laughs> <laughs> we're kind of long in the tooth. And I'm walking like Fred Sanford. And it's like, with that walk, and he, he makes me laugh. He actually played the theme song from Sanford and Son. <laughs> we shared that with the doctor that we were in her office, and she just said, you two ought to have a sitcom, and I used to call my parents the Bickersons. So here we are, the Bickersons, the Saunders, and he gave me the opportunity to tell my story. And I feel like a load has been lifted. Well, let me, let me, let me interrupt, I'm gonna briefly interrupt you just for a second. I'm, not, I'm letting you do most of the talking. Okay. Cause I talk a lot. <laughs> so I've been told. <laughs> but, all right. So you, you left the post office and you started drinking at what age? Oh. Roughly, approximately. Drinking, drinking? Yes. About a good 10 years before I was forced to retire at 28 and a half years in the post office. So 10 years prior. 18 years into the post office, you started drinking. Yeah. They were driving you that much, that crazy. The people coming yeah. into the post office were driving you to drink. I almost lost my job on a couple of nights going out in the lobby trying to beat somebody down. They had my pressure up that high. Okay, so now you have high blood pressure. Yes. You had to come home, and you would come home. And drink. And you would drink. And drink. How soon after you entered the house did you open the bottle? Oh, I was in my refrigerator before I could get through my to my bedroom. What about food? It didn't matter. I had lunch. So you would drink? You would miss out on dinner? Yes. Oh my God. <laughs> So you would drink, you would drink every night. Yes. For 10 years. Yeah. Okay. And you were smoking. Yes. Newport Longs. Is it half a pack a day? I'd say I got up to a whole pack. 
Oh, Jesus. You were smoking a pack a day of cigarettes? Yeah. Drinking? I'm sorry. I, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I'm just trying it's to... It's just my history. I'm, 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 I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to picture it in my mind. I'm, 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 it was a habit that I had for 40 years. So it basically enabled you to deal with your circumstances. Yes. And it pacified you. It made you feel good for the moment. For the moment. Yeah, but it was damaging your body. Yes. And you didn't realize it. And I knew something might have been going on, but it's like I didn't pay it no mind. I had to get to work in the morning. It's like gotta make the donuts. No, when you had your when you had your first heart attack, that was in two thousand eleven. In two thousand eleven, then you had two other heart attacks in two thousand fourteen, right? Yes, in one day. In one day, now that would be sufficient for most people to say, "Whoa, wait a minute now, something ain't right." So I smoked even after I had the two heart attacks. Did you stop drinking? No. You still continued to drink even yeah. after the two artists had. Yeah. Even after they put a pacemaker in. Yes. Even before you met me. Yes. You were drinking and you were smoking. I was lost. Only after, by my encouragement, you stopped smoking. I bought nicotine patches. And then I couldn't afford the nicotine patches. And you went back to smoking because you couldn't afford yeah. them anymore. But yeah. You, but you could afford the I cigarettes. I could afford the uh, cigarettes. But then when I bought you patches, you were able to eventually stop. Yes. Totally. And you haven't had a cigarette since for how long? It's been going on six months. And I feel com I can finally breathe deeply. All right. Tell me about the CBD. Tell me about what CBD has done for you. Hip pain. Oh, it knocks the pain out. I don't want to take any pills at a certain point. It messes with my stomach. I can't do pills the way some people can do the pills. And the CBD knocks the pain out. Okay. Now, we, you and I both know that my daily choice, CBD, CBD is not a medicine. It's not. It's not. I realize that, but it works. But it's, it's not something that we can tell people to, to take to alleviate pain and this kind of thing? I know I didn't sign up for this as far as trying to convince somebody that CBD actually worked for me, but it's been a blessing in my life that I was introduced to it by you. I, I can attest to the fact that 750, she takes 750, and now she takes 1500. Natural, oh my goodness. <laughs> You're a beast. You're a beast. <laughs> um, but, but my point, I wanted, I wanted her to make this video because I could do a video and I could talk about her life as I can talk about my own. But, the, but coming out of my mouth, it's not nearly as strong as it coming out of her mouth. There's a, there's a, there's a daughter, there's a son, there's a child, there's a young, per, young, young adult, there's an older adult. That it, needs to hear this message. That needs to hear the message. I have just wreaked havoc on my own body. And little did I realize what was going on internally. Just to stay inebriated or get some type of comfort from smoke and liquor. And eventually I just lost the desire. I got saved and... It took away my desire. I asked the Lord to take this desire away from me. Now, let me, let me make it clear to you all, right? I am not saying that drinking is bad. You want to have a beer? You want to you drink your liquor? Drink, 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 drink. <laughs> okay? I'm not saying that don't drink. What I'm simply saying is, is that the manner in which she was drinking, it, it began. It wasn't so, man, good for man nor beast. It was. It harmed her health. Yes. So I have to, as the husband, I have to go with her to Nellis Air Force Base, and I have to. I had to buy her a wheelchair so she could get, you know, mobilized because it's painful for her to even sit down, much less walk around. Yeah. So I have a caring heart. I mean, I'm doing these things for her, but then I'm thinking to myself, what is? It, what else can you do? to impact somebody else 
so that they can really get a, a sense of what you're feeling because you have tremendous pain in your hip. Yeah. And I mean, to the point where at the end of next month. It makes me want to cry. It does. I've seen it. I've already had acupuncture done and I had both ears done today. And there are critical spots that affect the pain in my hips. I went the alternative method as well as the CBD and it gives me some relief. It honestly does. And that's all we, when you get to the, when you get to be 50 or 60 plus. Yeah. What you, let me tell you what you want. <laughs> You want some relief. Yes. If you don't care about nothing else, where is the relief? So at the end of next month, she's going to get a shot in her back for to replace some of the um, the fluid. The fluid in between out of the vertebrae. The vertebrae, you know. This um, is a reminder. Hold on. Marie exercise. <laughs> it's funny. He's got me exercising. This is a reminder. Marie exercise. It's funny. The reason I'm laughing is because. She asked me to assist her in being able to do push-ups. She asked me to assist her in being able to do planks for her body. This young lady here, she can do push-ups now. She can, I mean, with the arm go all the way. Full out push-ups. Full out. And go, planks. Go all the way down and all the way up kind of push-ups now. Yeah. Now people say, well, you know, she's, you're a drill sergeant, but she's not a Marine. I know that. <laughs> she's my wife. I don't treat her like she's a private, but I'm very demanding on my own body. And I do what you ask me to do. You're asking me. You're saying, look, I want to get arms like Angela Bassett. And yeah. what's love got to do with it? Yeah, her arms were everything. Now, you're not going to get arms like that if you don't eat correctly. Uh, yes. And you don't exercise correctly. If you want to play around and be on the phone playing around, well, that's not what then you, don't, you obviously don't want to get right. But if you want to get right, we have to do right. Yeah. Now, it depends upon, you're telling me that in the next 90 days, you want to get this done in 90 days. Yes. So, you're telling me, so, like, a lot of people will say, well, I want to lose weight. Okay, you want to lose weight. How much weight do you want to lose? Uh, that's a good question. I don't know. Okay. Well, you had to have thought of giving it some thought. By what time do you want to lose the weight? Well, I mean, I'll know when I lose it. What? Wait, what? So, the first thing that we do in all things... I tell my wife is that we need to determine what it is we want and why we want it. I need to lose 10 pounds. And why we Easy. want it. Why we want it. She wants to lose 10 pounds. And what would 10 pounds, losing 10 pounds do for you? We need to know that. Because so we can visualize it. So we can see it. It'll make me less heavy on my hips. Yeah. My hips won't be screaming at me. Okay, so we, so we know. She Not that I have big hips. But she'll have less weight on the hips. Yes. So we know that. Then the next thing we need to determine is um, what are we going to do to lose the weight? What are we going to eat? And what exercises are we going to do? I did a salad today, and I haven't done a Wendy's salad, chicken salad, in a good minute. But that salad was good. I know my niece actually poo-pooed the salad because it had fruit inside that it had apples and uh it had different things in it. it had different things in it that she didn't approve of because she wouldn't eat it and that's another thing if a person is telling me like do you realize that when i decided i was going to get titan a great dane dog big dog they told me my first cousin told me you need to get, you don't need to get married again, man. You've been married three times. And married ain't for you. Well, obviously he's wrong because I'm married again. Now, a small dog is not for me. I got a dog that weighs 130 pounds. Yeah. So that's and obviously he's nothing. Everything. He needs everything. He's he's our baby. But my point is is that don't listen to a person give you advice if you don't want what they have. Yeah. So if I don't want what you have, you know, it's okay for you to give me advice, but I don't need to listen to it because it's not, I'm, I don't want to duplicate what it is that you've done. It right. makes no sense. Right. So I sit there, my wife and I, we sit and we talk, oh. we, we talk, we talk. It's perfection. 
I didn't realize husbands and wives talk to this degree. Even we have epiphanies with the, each other. It's like a few weeks back, it's like I couldn't get enough of the conversation that we were having. We were talking about I am. Yes. We were talking about, you know, the fact that when you go into the Bible, you read a phrase that says, I am. I am. How powerful is that phrase? Very. So when you say you're something, I am powerful, I am strong, I am confident, I am noteworthy, I am professional, I am proficient, I am pro I am profound, whatever, whatever, whatever I am statements you want to use. Yes. You can appreciate those. What if you ask Jesus, hey, Jesus, how you doing? I know you're doing all right. How you doing? And he said, fair to Midland, I'm fair to Midland. But what? You, for, you, you fair to Midland? The Lord would never say that. You know, what, what if he said, you know, I'm making it. I'm getting by. Oh. I'm going to be okay. How would you feel about what the Lord would say if he said that to you? You would, you would look at the Lord differently. Yeah. What if you ask God? You say, God... I know a lot of times like, we ask you for stuff, but what do you want from us? And he said, well, I don't know, you know, I'm fair, I don't know, I feel, I feel pretty good, I'm fair to Midland. Wait, 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 wait. you God, you fair to... <laughs> you wouldn't know how to act. So why is it that we, and since we're made in God's image, yeah. why would we answer... Fair to Midland. Fair to Midland, I'm doing all right, I'm getting by. It's gonna be okay. Oh, because of the fact that we're not, we're not the Almighty. We're not, we're not mighty or the Almighty. Yes, I know that, but we are made in His image, and if we're made in His image, shouldn't we attempt to emulate what He might yes, do? Yes. The way He would might act if He was. I so get that. If He had human tendencies, think about it. I so understand. You know. So when I sit down and talk to my wife, I said, "Look." You know, my, my my family growing up, you know, it was okay for me to make $9 an hour. Uh, it was okay for me to make $10 an hour. It was okay for me to make $23 an hour. And not I, with kids in tow. But then you look at having children, you look at... No, it's not okay. Right. It's not okay. It's okay to make $50 an hour. A hundred dollars an hour. Yeah. That's better. We can we can get by on that, okay? But it's not people act as though money money's not everything. Money ranks it in my opinion, money ranks right up there with oxygen. Yeah. But we gotta live. But money's not the end all. The end all the be all. However Absolutely not. However, you can't pay your electric bill with love. I have not found a way of doing that yet. <laughs> I wish I could. You said yet. Yet. And you, I haven't found a way of doing it yet. You can't pay your electric bill with love. It takes money. And they're printing money every, every day. day. There is no shortage of money. There's merely shortage of ideas and shortage of mindset and shortage of effort. There's a lot of shortage of that. We are professional quitters. We could get a doctor degree in quitting, most of us. I would profess that we need to kind of switch that around a little bit. We need yeah. to push and, and, and push ourselves a little bit to not quit. I'm following your lead. To go further, to go further and be better. It's beneficial that I follow your lead. You make so much sense to me. Thank you. You're I welcome. appreciate you. You're welcome, baby. You know, so this is not me. You make me misty-eyed. <laughs> This is not me forcing my wife to bear her soul and tell her business. Because there's some things that need to stay behind closed doors. Yes. But at the same time, there are people that need to hear what's being said. And they need to think about it a little bit. They need to, well, you know, I, need, I never thought of that. And yes. I need to think about it just a little bit. You know? Because, see, her and I, she and I, we're not going to be here forever. She's 62. I'm about to be 63 at the end of this month. It'd be nice if I lived another 50 years. Yeah. You know, maybe I might. Who knows, man? 
<laughs> but if I don't live another 50 years, let's say I, I got 25 more years in me, 30 more years in me, let's just say, okay? If I did, if I, if I could live to be 91, I would live to be the age of my grandfather. Yeah. That would be a great life in my mind. So now what I'm looking at is the things I do today, what legacy am I going to leave my wife? Because in all likelihood, I'm probably going to go before she does. Because women live have a tendency to live longer than husbands. Also, my son and my daughter, my sons and my daughters, they, they're going to look at, they're going to turn and say, if somebody says, tell me about James Saunders. Can you tell me about him? Yeah, he was this, he was that, he did this, he did that. He or, was a lot of things. Or they're just going to say, he lied. <laughs> no, by no stretch of the imagination could I actually utter those words. He died. He died. He, 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 Jane, yeah, he died. I Ooh. appreciate you. I've never appreciated another human being the way I appreciate you. It's like you were exactly what I needed in my life. It's like giving me some type of direction. And I'm so pleased that I met you. Our paths crossed at the precise time in which it was necessary. That, that they did. Do you realize that she grew up in my neighborhood? Yeah. I'll be several streets down from me. I never knew who she was. I she went to the same out. elementary school. I didn't know who she was. Went to the same high school. I didn't know who she was. I got to go ahead and get involved in a network marketing company <laughs> and meet her. <laughs> Decades later, yeah. she comes to my house. She says, I want to see how you think. I want to see what you do. Your method of operation. Your method of operation. And we resonated with, we, with each other from that point forward. And I said, this is an exquisite dude. You know, so the rest of it is, as you know, is history. I am so glad this woman is my wife. I'm so glad we've come together. I'm so glad that we had this talk. I'm so glad that we're sharing with you all. Um, you can fake certain things, but you can't fake this. Yeah. This is real. For okay? real. This is real. And I want you all to understand that... Thank you, hon. You're welcome, baby. Oh. I want you all to understand that as a married couple, you need to talk to one another. Yes, it's necessary. Not talk at one I another. I don't ever want to get in that position that I'm talking at you. You know, we want to talk Sometimes to you piss me off. Of course. With your sense of humor. <laughs> like, you saw me walking like Fred Sanford because of my hips, and you played the theme song. I happen to like that theme song. <laughs> but you played it for my doctor at Nellis. <laughs> it's like, you dodo bird. But you we, keep we, me laughing. We had a lot of fun with it. And, you know, the, the purpose of this video that we're doing is to just to wake you guys up and to look at yourself and say, what more can I do for myself? What more, what, what should I not do that's going to impact my body adversely? See, I have never smoked because the smoke might stunt my growth. <laughs> All six foot five of you. I don't, I don't drink. By choice, don't have anything wrong with it, but I don't need any help staggering because I got multiple sclerosis. I really don't need any help. <laughs> um, my wife, is she doesn't drink. She doesn't smoke. That's by choice. If yeah. she wanted to return to drinking again, I'd say, go ahead. Mm -hmm. I can do what you got to do. I've got one in my refrigerator that one of my girlfriends of 40 years brought to my apartment in Wilmington, North Carolina. I still have bottles of vino in my refrigerator. I haven't had felt the compulsion to drink. You see, the reason why we're sharing this with you is that I had to pick up some medication for my wife the other day. This is just a, a sample. sample of the, the bottles of pills I had to pick up for her. Now, if now, of course, we have that. And we got liquid lipo too, you know, because you want to lose a little bit of weight. Yeah. She lost 31 pounds in six weeks. Went from a size uh, 14 coat to a size 10, you know. And this is uh, this is what they call Trim T65. It's really good. You spray it in your mouth. It, it, 
curbs your appetite for. That was a phenomenal feeling. Sweet and salties. But I'm gonna show you, you see, see all these pills here? All these capsules that she takes daily, from mm. aspirin to, help, to, to all the different yeah, medications. Yeah, blood pressure medication. Blood pressure medication. Uh, Those were things that she did to her body. Not all of it's hereditary. Not all of it's hereditary. Some of it might be, but not all of it's hereditary. Some of it's because she did something, she drank too much, she smoked too much. You know, it was good for her to stop smoking. It was good for her to stop smoking. That's, and that's a lesson for the rest of you that want to be smoking. You need to stop. Get the patches. You don't even stop. get started. Don't even get started. It's not fancy. It doesn't look good. Can you imagine aliens coming to this planet and they and we say, wait, wait why, do you so, why do you suck and smoke into your lungs? It just seemed like the thing to do. And you would look... They, for they would, no good reason. No, they would look at I you can't like, give you a reason. What the heck are you... Okay. So I'm showing you all the bottles of pills to show to you that even though you're in your 60s, she takes five different medications plus CBD. Me, what do I take? Because I'm, I'm older than her. I take no medication and yeah. I have multiple sclerosis. Now, so what's the difference between she and I? Maybe hereditary is part of it. Maybe the fact that I lifted weights. Maybe the fact that my mindset is different. Yeah. Maybe the fact of, you know, I just don't like medication. I don't like, maybe, maybe the fact that I was given vaccinations before I got out of the army. Yeah. And I somehow ended up with multiple sclerosis because of that. I will never know. Now, I did get my dog on COVID-19 shot. Don't, don't get it twisted. I got mine as well. I got another one that's supposed to come down on April, on April 3rd. So don't get it twisted. But I'm simply saying is that if you're not on medication right now at 20, at 30, at 40, at 50, you don't necessarily have to become on medication. Now, fortunately, because of the fact that I am a veteran, she doesn't have to pay for none of that medication. She, our hospital visits, between her having Medicare and her having TRICARE and me being a veteran, she pays nothing for it. Thank goodness. Nothing. If she had, if we had to pay for that stuff, for her going to the doctor, we got the neurologist, yeah. the cardiologist, the yeah. acupuncture, another you know, ologist. I mean, the ology out of the out of the world. You know, she'd have to pay have to pay for all of that. And people say that the, well, they would want to get involved in a business if they didn't have to pay for medical. Well, she no longer has to pay for medical. She receives a pension, and she receives Social Security Disability. It all comes to her. All of it comes to her. All right? What if she had to pay for medical from that? Wow. What would it, what would it be like if she had to pay to go to the cardiologist? Ew. She, we, we had three appointments today. Yeah. We had to go to the cardiologist. You had acupuncture. And you had radiology. The radiology. Do you can you do you can you fathom how much that would cost? That was one a day. A lot of money, cause I've had doctor's bills coming out of New Hanover County, that hospital, and I had to worry about myself going to New Hanover Hospital, cause COVID was up off the hook. Now. When you paid, what were your typical bills in the Hanover Hospital? What were your typical bills that you would pay? Uh, 200, 130? It was more than 100. And plus you had to pay for medical coverage quarterly or monthly? Whenever I went to the doctor. What about the regular, regular, regular everyday coverage? Didn't you have to pay a, a fee? Yeah. How much did you have to pay for that? I don't even remember. I've been doing it for free since I married you. And I don't remember. I was shelling out a lot of money. So, you know, I mean, I want all of you that listen within the sound of my voice to be able to save your money. Take that money that you don't spend on medical coverage if you position yourself correctly and put it into investments. Yeah. Put it into Bitcoin. Put it into the stock market.
put it into something that's going to bring you money. Yeah. Anything that we buy now, I buy it from the stuff that I make. Yeah. Can you imagine if you if you if you only bought stuff because of the stuff that you made? And not stuff that you had to, to work for to get? I'm waiting for my stimulus check so I could actually place financial money behind my Akashic's account. Well, you know, aside from that, you know, if, if you're getting... Some of you are waiting for the stimulus money. Okay, that's fine. If you're waiting for the stimulus money, what are you going to do with it? You're going to buy a bunch of sneakers with it? No. You're gonna buy a bunch of food with it. No. You're gonna pay. You're gonna pay some bills because some of y'all are behind in bills. I understand. It's a bit really. It's, it's, you it's, it's, supply the basics for the household and do a very good job of it. You know, I just want you. I want you to be. I want you guys to look at your life. Look yeah. At your, look at your routine. That require, requires. Look at your routine. Some self reflection. Meditate on how you're living. Meditate on how you're living. You wake up and tomorrow morning, you have to ask yourself, am I satisfied where I'm at? I know I am. Am I satisfied with what I'm doing? Could I do a little bit better? And if I could do a little bit better, what do I need to change? I need to get my Discover card paid off. I need to come down on my car payment. So, as long as I can utilize the excess money and have the excess money pay down my bills, that would be everything to me. And that's what I'm attempting to do with my wife, to focus on maybe doubling up on the Discover Card payment, pay two payments instead of one. Yes. Double up on the car payment, pay yes. two payments instead of one. So that we can go from maybe paying the car off in three years, paying it off in 18 months. Yes. Right? But you can't do that if you don't sit down and think about what it is that you he have to do. He brought the concept to me, and it was everything. I haven't had any discussion about money with somebody outside of myself. It was just an idea in my head. He makes me think. And I'm so grateful for the Lord sending me somebody of his caliber. You've done a good job, hon. Thank you. You're welcome, baby. I mean, so, so for this video, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you look at it and share it with somebody and that will make them think about what they're doing and, yeah. and be better. And with that in mind, we'll say good night. Thank Peace. you so much. Peace. Peace be with you. And blessings.